Good morning. Welcome uh, to our Prayer Vision Monday. It's so good to have you even watching online. I know a lot of you watch later at different times and certainly would love to have you be here with me. Um, I, it has been a, quite a year as we come to the end of this year and and um, for you, um, or for me anyway, I ask the Lord every every year, I ask the Lord for the new scripture for the upcoming year. And I use that as a point of, of um, contact, a place that I hinge my faith for the new year. And I will speak over that word, I will meditate that word, and so we, I've been, I, he's been doing this for me for quite a few years, so I have quite a few different scriptures that he's given me every year, and last year he gave me Isaiah 60, which is about the glory of the Lord being risen upon us, and so I um, spent a lot of time this past year, this 2023, on the glory, and the different uh, scriptures on the glory, and just um, how the glory showed up and manifested itself. A lot of times when the glory would show up, it wasn't always good for everybody, and so um, the glory of the Lord uh, does more than just bless, sometimes the glory of the Lord brings a judgment. And this year, the Lord already gave me the verse for 2023, which is uh, based from Psalm 45. And I'm going to give you that and um, ask the Lord. You don't have to take my scripture. Ask God for him to give you your scripture for the year, one that he wants you to meditate on and believe God to do for you. I saw the manifestation of Psalm 6, uh, Isaiah 60 this year in our life and in many. Even Pastor Kevin had a dream about the glory. And, um, and so there are a lot of things that the Lord spoke to me through that those scriptures and the, and the scripture of Isaiah 60 this year. And as I was expecting God to perform his word. And so God does, um, will do nothing in the earth, like Pastor Kevin talks to us about, unless he first tells his prophets. So he will tell you and warn you of things to come. He wants you to, he wants to give his people a heads up. Amen. He says that he is the good shepherd. He's, he is the shepherd that leads us. Now, the good shepherd like our Jesus, he's a good shepherd, he will always be looking for the new place you need to go. And so he will lead you if something's drying up, just like the prophet in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament in Kings, he was told the brook dried up, and, and there for a while the brook was, was flowing, the ravens were feeding him, but guess what, the brook dried up and there was another place to go. And it was an unusual place. It was an unexpected source of supply. God loves to use unexpected sources of supply for you and I. And in Psalm 45, let me just give you the beginning of it, not the whole part of it, but um, it says, My heart is indicting a good matter, and I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. In other words, I want to allow God to write words on my tongue, to write, to, to, for me to be able to speak the right words. He says, you are fairer than the children of men, and grace is poured into your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. So gird your sword, your sword upon your thigh, O most mighty, and with your glory and your majesty, and in your majesty, ride prosperously because of truth and meekness, righteousness, and your right hand will teach you terrible things and your arrows will be sharp in the heart of the king's enemies whereby the people will fall under you that's just the beginning of it of it and and he 
the scepter of God's kingdom is a right scepter. It is a kingdom of righteousness. It is a kingdom of integrity. It is not like the world system. It is not uh, uh, like the world. God is holy. He has not changed. He is always going to be holy. And guess what? He said that he would like us to be holy. Um, as, as, um, as we celebrate the second week yesterday, Sunday, of Advent, um, we celebrate it every year. And the visitations of the angels that came and appeared all around the coming of the Lord. And so the second Sunday of Advent, we find the angel visiting Mary. Amen. In Luke 1. And in that visitation, that angelic, this, an unexpected source, an unexpected occurrence, right? Mary was received the word, amen, received the word of the Lord and accepted it, amen, even though she couldn't see how it could possibly come true. I tell you, I, I remember a couple months, a couple years ago, the Lord showed me different times. He gave me a scepter of this. I said, Lord, how can this be? I believe that you're giving it. But in this day and age, it doesn't look like this is possible. But see, with men, things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. So let's read the story about uh, Luke here in, in Luke chapter 1. And I want, as, as we every year when I go through these passages, I, I want to get a fresh revelation of it for myself. I want God to give me something new because this word is a living word. This word is a person who is right now seated at the right hand of the Father and, and ministering and dispatching angels on account of his word. And so in this passage in Luke chapter 2, I believe it's the end of 1 or 2. Let me just get right here. Hallelujah. In, at the end of one, and it says, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll just read the story. It says here, and the angel in verses, um, we'll start with 26. And about the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, and to a virgin who was engaged to get married to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored of the Lord. The Lord is with you, and blessed are you among women. Isn't that interesting that the angel said, You are blessed. You are favored right now. You are favored woman. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings. And she cast in her mind, what is this salutation mean to me? But the angel said, fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do you know that today we already have favor? We have favor through Jesus Christ. He has, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would have everlasting life. So you already have favor because you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you want to have an expectation that God wants to bless you. He said, this angel said, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't think he's coming to clobber you. He's come to bless you. He loves you. He who did not withhold his very best, God the Father, meaning he did not withhold his only son, but he gave him for you and I. Will he withhold anything? No, he won't. And so let's go on. It said, so he said, so do you want to make sure that you are not in fear? I talked last week 
about the valley of decision or the week before. There's many people making decisions today, making decisions that I'm afraid that I, ne I need to wear a mask. I'm afraid I'm not going to pay the rent. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make it in this hour. I'm afraid of some cancer or some disease. I'm afraid of a, a war breaking out in, the, in this country. I'm afraid of, of people watching me. I'm afraid of, of, of my for my children. You want to identify if you are in fear because God does not want you to be in fear. He says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if you are feeling fear or sensing fear or you have a sense of fear over a situation, I want you to recognize that that did not come from God. God is respects faith. So I want you to make a decision to identify that fear, if you have one, and, and put a word of faith on it right now. This is one. Fear not. <laughs> you have favor with God. You can take this scripture this morning. Luke 1. Fear not. I will fear not, Lord, because I have favor with you, God, through Jesus Christ. And so as he said that, he said, Behold, you are going to conceive and bring forth a son, and that son will be called Jesus. And I'm not just going to bless you, but I'm bringing something new into your life that you've never experienced before. Can you, do you believe that God will do something new in your life? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to bring something new in your life today. And Jesus, and, and this son will be called, this son of yours will be called Jesus. He will be great. This new thing will be great. And he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob. And forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, seeing I know not a man? You know what? You don't need to know a man. You just need to know God. You need to know that God has something so beautiful for you if you will just by faith receive it. I appreciate that, that he, he, the angel said, Mary thought she had to have a man involved in this. There has to be a natural person that's gonna help me with this. And she was getting ready to get married to Joseph. How would this be? But the angel said, nothing shall be impossible for me. So let's go on and said, and the, and the angel answered. So she said, how can this be? And, but she wasn't like her uncle. I guess it was an uncle, Zacharias, right? So her uncle, Zacharias, he did not receive that word. He didn't want, he, he didn't like that they were supposed to name his wife's newborn baby, John. That wasn't protocol. In that, in that family, the way you did it in the priesthood, right? So he said he, he had to have his mouth shut. But Mary came differently. She didn't understand. She didn't know how it could be possible. But she said, be it unto me according to your word. And so and so the angel said, let's go back to the story here. She said in thir verse 34, Then Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. And this thing, that it, this holy thing, 
will be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin, she got a word of knowledge. Your cousin Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is her sixth month, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary's response, when that angel said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Mary said, Behold, thank you, Lord, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Amen. She did not understand how this could happen. But she didn't have to understand how it was going to happen. She just had to do receive the word of that angel and accept it and yield to it. The Bible says that you are to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. And we are to resist the devil. We humble ourselves and we resist the enemy when he tries to come at us. And so there's a humbleness that Mary had in receiving the word of the Lord, of that angel coming to her, that angel Gabriel. Will you receive the word of the Lord that nothing is impossible? We sang this song earlier. I was singing it early this morning when I was praying with my sisters early. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Nothing is impossible, Lord. This is a scripture. Several years ago, the Lord gave Pastor Kevin a dream. We were desiring um, this home that we own back in Vero Beach that we went through a season where that was basically taken from us. And um, and Kevin, you know, his desire was to, to have that house back. And, of course, we talked to the Lord about it, but, but we, were, we were accepting of where we were. We were, Lord, whatever you have for us, if it's not a good thing, we don't want it even if we desire it. And, Kevin, and the Holy Spirit gave um, Kevin a dream. And in the dream, the man that owned the house was showing Pastor Kevin, invited Pastor Kevin around, gave him the keys, and told him that he wanted him to have the house. So he had the dream about that, 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 that this man was going to give him the keys. And when he woke up from that dream, he said, Lord... How can this be? I can't believe it. This is impossible. And the Lord quoted him this passage. It's in Jeremiah 32, 27. I tell you, you've got to get a hold of the word of God and stand. After all, you continue to stand on that word. Amen? You continue, the word is more real than anything that you can feel or see. It is the word framed all of these worlds into existence. Amen? The word is stronger and more real than you, anything you can see in the natural. So here in Jeremiah 32, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 32. Thank you, Lord. It says in verse, we'll start with 25. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy you a field for money and take witnesses, for the city is given right now into the hands of the Chaldeans. 
And then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hands of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will take it. But then in 40 years, I'm going to give it back to you. Or in that set time, I'm going to give it back to you. And there was, there was an evidence that he was to buy that field for money, even though they were going into captivity. God was going to give them that land back. And so that passage right there that God quoted to him the next morning was a confirming word that he, in fact, was going to restore that property to us. Amen? Now, you may think that that doesn't make sense to you. I don't believe it. Well, if you don't believe it, you're not going to have it. But guess what? We've been standing on that word here for several years, and we know that we're going to see that. Amen? We are going, we, because there is not anything too difficult or impossible for the Lord if you will believe. Amen? You just have to receive by faith that God's word is true. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, it talks about that we have not been redeemed with corruptible things. But we have been redeemed with the precious blood of God. We've also been redeemed with this word. Amen? This word, let me just, I want to quote it right from the word. Amen? So these things that God ordained, the blood, is not like a perishable thing. It was eternal. Jesus' blood is still alive today. It is still real. I want to read this to you. Thank you, Jesus. And so I want you to know that you still have an inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, he, and, and your inheritance in Christ Jesus, it says, is incorruptible, is undefiled, and it, is, it fades not away, and it is reserved in heaven for you. He has things laid up, not just in this hour, but in heaven, an inheritance reserved for you. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I tell you, there he I'm saved, but I'm being saved. I've been delivered, but I am still being delivered. I am continually being resurrected. I'm continually being saved. You want it's not enough that I have Luke chapter one last year or yesterday, but I've got to have this today. I've got to have this quickened word. See, this word. It quickens my mortal body. It brings life to me. Let's just read on. It says here, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through a manifold temptations, many things coming at you, that the testing or the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom you've not seen, but you love, in whom, though now you don't see him, yet you believe. I believe, even though I've not seen him. You rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired 
and search diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come to us. I mean, the prophets of old prophesied of the grace that would come. And this grace is an ever-increasing grace in the years ahead. As gross darkness covers the earth, as sin abounds, there's even a greater grace that abounds for people. Um, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. I want to scoot down here to verse 19. 18, it says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold from your vain works or conversations received by the traditions of the fathers, of your fathers. But you have been redeemed. In other words, you have not been redeemed by works. You have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It is a precious blood. It's compressed wealth. It is as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Seeing then, you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Have unfeigned love for the brethren. And see that you love one another with pure heart fervently. Because you have been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible See the word of God, which lives and abides forever. This word lives and abides forever, and it is able to redeem you. It is able to go into the flesh and winnow out and discern between bone and flesh and the intents of your heart. For all flesh is grass, and the glory of man as the flower of the, feet of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower even falls away. But the word of the Lord, it will endure forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. Amen. This word is incorruptible. This word is able to save you to the uttermost. Thank you, Jesus. And let's just read Hebrews chapter 4. Just go back a book. Thank you, Lord. For the word, it says in verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief as those that fell away in the wilderness. For the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to divide Divide asunder soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There is not any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. 
seeing that we have this great high priest, Jesus, who passed into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest, which has not been touched, but touched with the feelings of our weaknesses, and in all points was tempted, just like we are, yet he did not once sin. So let us come boldly. In your hour of weakness, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we can obtain mercy and grace to believe again for this hour. Nothing is impossible to you that believe in Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible for you. What have you limited God in? What have you stopped believing him about? Make a new decision. In 2024, I'm going to believe him to multiply and double my finances. You can, you can just believe for the double. You know, there is a double. Twofold anointing. I just believe for the double. I'm going to believe for the double. This morning, as I was reading Malachi chapter 3, as we were praying this morning, it says that your words have been stout against among, uh, uh, your words have been against me. So I want you to think about what have you been saying that the Lord can't do? What have you been saying is too too ridiculous, impossible. Because God says, nothing shall be impossible for them that believe. Amen? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. Will you believe like Mary? How can it be? I don't see how I can do this without a man. But the angel said, nothing shall be impossible for you. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a covenant. We have a covenant with people to represent Jesus. We have a covenant with Jesus. We've made it, and uh, he made covenant for us. We've accepted it. And in him, we live. And in him, we move. And in him, we have our being. He has revealed this covenant. Amen. He has new things for you in this hour. And he wants you to know that it is not corrupted. His blood and his promises are not fading away. Your inheritance is secure in, in Jesus and he has great things for you in this hour. Nothing is impossible. Get your belief over there again. Get your faith on it. Amen. Pastor Kevin, I'm sure, will share one of the dreams we had while we were in Miami this weekend. We had some powerful dreams. Sometimes the Lord will give us a series of dreams to show us a new direction that we're going to go in and um, or a confirmation that we are going in the right direction. And so uh, we were so grateful for the time with Pastor Sazo and his 14 year celebration of his church and celebrating with our beautiful Latin, the Latin community in Miami and the beautiful, beautiful people that he's brought into our lives. But we don't forget you. And you might have have stopped coming here, but we still pray for you, and we want to see you. 
We're going to be crossing over in this new year with prayer. We're going to have meetings the 30, 31st and the 1st. And we are going to have a powerful time celebrating this new year as we go into this new year. And we thank you and invite you to come and join with us. Maybe you haven't been with us for a while, but we're going to be believing God for this tremendous new year that is ahead. He is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. And even if you don't feel that God's sending you or have a word to go to the nations, you can be right here in the city and be go to the nations. You don't have to even leave very far, okay? But I want you to know that he has called you. And I'm going to give you this one verse here from Isaiah 42, because we already went over these other ones. It's Isaiah 42, verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I, the Lord, will hold your hand and I will keep you and I will give you for a covenant of the people for and for a light to the Gentiles. Amen? To the nations, that means. Now, the Lord gave me that verse oh, many, 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 many years ago. I have it written in here in 17, 18, 16. So I have been meditating on that word and holding to that word for quite a while. But you know, there is due season. And when the clouds are full of rain, Pastor Kevin talked about this, they empty themselves. When you have been speaking the word, when you have de been declaring the word and believing the word, it is going to manifest itself. Hallelujah. And I have been standing on that word and accepting that word and taking that word and it is manifesting today. Amen. I believe in this year you are going to see the manifestation of things that you have been standing on for a long time. But you have been standing in faith, resting on the promise. Amen. And God is going to bring it to pass. There are miracles. There are supernatural workings of miracles that are going to take place. There are suddenlies that are going to take place Suddenly, just like that angel appeared to Mary, and suddenly her life was changed forever. Hallelujah. There is a due season for you, a due season for me. Amen? But keep expecting it. God loves you. He has a good plan for you. He's not mad at you. He has plans of a good end, a future, and, a, and an awesome, awesome 2023. So as we spend our focus, as we the Advent approaches, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and the angelic forces that come into play, expect the angelic, the supernatural divine intervention, the divine a purpose is the divine, supernatural, divine intervention in your life at this moment in Jesus' name. We thank you for being with us. God bless you. I pray that you will join us on Sunday or Wednesday night. Watch us on Facebook, Instagram. We've got an Instagram account. I think it's called um, KGHM is Instagram. KGHM, KGH at Instagram. But we have different mediums, uh, places you can watch us. 
have a lot on WhatsApp that's being sent out through the, to the Latin community. Um, if you would like us to pray for you, let us know. We'll pray for, uh, for you. Uh, if there's a specific prayer request, you can put it on the email. Amen. We're here for you. Hallelujah. And we are here real. We are really here. Amen. This is not a facade. This is a real brick and mortar here. Amen. This isn't a green background. This is a real place. Amen. This is a real altar. Amen. And you can come and join us. I pray, I pray that you make it, make a, a decision that you are going to spend, spend your end of the year different in preparation in your heart and with expectation along with us for the great manifestation of what God's going to do in your life and in your family and in the earth for 2024. We love you. God bless you. Have a great day.